WLBT News starts now with breaking news. And if you're just waking up, we are tracking breaking news in Jackson. The Jackson fire crews are on the scene of a house fire right now. Our Jewel Hillary is there and she joins us with the latest. Jewel. Joanne Wilson, we're in South Jackson. All right, Jewel, thanks so much for that update. This is what you need to know before you head out the door this morning. We are under a freeze warning across pretty much all of central Mississippi, and this goes until 9 o'clock in the morning. The reason why is because our temperatures right now are sub freezing. It is 29 degrees right now in Jackson, 27 Forest, and Raleigh is our cold spot at 25 degrees. Only one spot that I'm seeing that's above freezing, and that is Macomb right now sitting at 33 degrees. For the rest of your morning, expect those temperatures to start rising by around 8 to 9 a.m. is when we'll be up above of freezing will be in the low 40s by the time you're heading into the office building. We'll have a full check on today's weather in just a few minutes. Happening today, the man police say was behind Thursday night's deadly shooting spree in Jackson and Ridgeland will appear in court. 22 year old Zebulum James, a civil engineering major at Jackson State University, is accused of gunning down one woman as she pumped gas at a shell station on Watkins Drive and another woman in the parking lot of Logan Steakhouse on County Line Road. Before that, James is believed to have opened fire on a JTRAN bus on Watkins Drive, then on an occupied house also on Watkins Drive. Jackson Police Chief Lee Van says they are still gathering evidence to determine a motive, but he believes the shootings were random acts. There are still unanswered questions this morning after residents discovered a car in a creek in Jackson with a body inside. And the biggest question many are asking, what caused that car to wind up there in the first place? CJ the Master has the latest on the investigation. In Jackson, CJ the Master, three on your side. New overnight, Indianapolis police say they have made an arrest in the murder of Amanda Blackburn. She's the pregnant mother and pastor's wife who officers say was killed during a home invasion more than a week ago. Police announced that they've arrested 18-year-old Larry Taylor on a preliminary charge of murder. The 28-year-old victim was found dead on November 10th by her husband when he returned home from the gym. Happening now, the search is on for the man who gunned down a two-lane medical student. Police say 21-year-old Yurik Kane was attempting to abduct a woman in New Orleans. The med student tried to intervene, and that's when Kane pulled out a handgun and shot him in the stomach. We know who you are uh, and you need to know that we are going to find you. We need the public's help to do this, but there is no question now that we know who he is, that he will be brought to justice. Once arrested, Kane will face charges of attempted first degree murder, second degree kidnapping and armed robbery. Now this update, court documents indicate a woman who plowed her car into a homecoming parade for Oklahoma State University was not drunk. 25-year-old Adesha Chambers killed four people and injured dozens more when she drove into the parade route on October 24th. A document filed Thursday in Payne County District Court indicates that Chambers' blood alcohol content was only .01, far below the legal limit of .08. Right now, we want to show you pictures of two children missing out of Texas. There's an Amber Alert out for both of them. Cheryl Lassiter is learning about this in the Alert Center. Cheryl. Joy, take a look at these two children. They are believed to be in grave or immediate danger. That's the latest from the Alert Center. All right, Cheryl, the Ole Miss Rebels are keeping their hopes alive for an SEC West title with a 38 to 17 win over LSU over the weekend. And in the process, the team secured its place in the Ole Miss record books. Quarterback Chad Kelly broke two school records for touchdowns and for total offensive yards in a season. And they've still got another game to go, that being the Egg Bowl against Mississippi State next weekend. And it was a wild game in Fayetteville for the Bulldogs when they took on the Razorbacks. After giving up a 17-point lead, State took control for the final time late in the fourth quarter. The Dogs sealed the deal when they blocked Arkansas's field goal attempt with less than a minute to play. It was a sensational block. They host the Rebels in Starkville on Saturday. And I just said this, that the Mississippi State Bulldogs had a sensation, sensational play. See, it's difficult for me to say, <laughs> but it was. It because was a great play. And you I was are. Really explain why you're hotty toddy. You're yeah, alone. I, I graduated so from sense. Ole Miss. There but, you, go. Uh, you know, I'm a Mississippian first. That's right. you got to give credit where credit's due. Mm -hmm. 607 <laughs> now and 28 degrees in Jackson. Got your traffic and weather together on this chilly morning. Look outside. Do the roads look chilly to you? Yeah, that's because they probably are. 28 degrees is what you're looking at. I-55 at the Natchez Trace. Nothing out there to slow you down. You just want to give yourself some extra time as you head out the door. That's just to get the car warmed up. And uh, Julia has more on that.
Yeah, I've got a live look at what's happening on First Alert Doppler radar. It's cold, but it is rain free, so it should be a pretty easy morning drive in once you give yourself that extra time to again heat up the car like Joy just recommended. I also recommend maybe having a few extra layers on. We are in the 20s right now. We're not going to be above the freezing mark until we get towards around 8, 9 o'clock, but otherwise should be a pretty easy drive in. We'll have a full look at the day's weather coming up right after the break. Stay tuned. This is WLBT First Alert Weather. Time is 6.11. Good morning. I'm First Alert Meteorologist Julia Wide. Maybe the kids are home from school today. 60s tomorrow should be really nice and pleasant on Wednesday and on Thanksgiving in the upper 60s. All right, Julia, thanks. 614 is your time. We've got a look at First Alert traffic and weather together for you right here on the Big Amazing Monitor. I-55 at the Waterworks Clare. If it's all clear, if you're heading into downtown or maybe, maybe heading up northbound towards Madison County, either way, got a clear shot. Lots of kids out of school this week, so traffic should be really good. Next on three. I'm going to hand this to you. Okay. Officer Jolly. Jolly. <laughs> That's a great name. <laughs> He took pen to paper and now he's taken to the streets. How one man is sharing the love he had with his wife. Up next. Good morning. I'm First Alert Meteorologist Julia Wyden. Going to be a nice day today, but on the cool side, a good amount of sunshine and temperatures that are coming up into the mid and upper 50s, 57 for a high temp at Raymond. Tomorrow getting a little bit warmer than the clouds are going to be filling in as well. We'll see numbers in the low and mid 60s for our Tuesday and travel conditions should be pretty decent if you are going to be hitting the road for Thanksgiving on Wednesday. We'll be in the mid and upper 60s. Thanksgiving Thursday, 69 degrees, mostly cloudy skies. Rain moves in on Black Friday. Time now is 617 and as always we have your weather first after every single commercial break here on WLBT. What you need to know for today as you get ready to head out the door. There are no showers to warn you about, but it is incredibly cold. In fact, we still are under a freeze warning until 9 o'clock this morning. Now, if you're going to be heading out the door to maybe catch a flight today, no delays at the airport here or at any of your connecting flights. Atlanta, Houston, Dallas all look to be smooth sailing and you can always check in on the forecast for close to home or if you're traveling, you can update that forecast no matter where you are using the first alert weather app and shows current temps in the 20s will be in the mid 30s by 8 o'clock this morning. If you were there, you might have seen it. A standoff at the stands at the Ole Miss game. Yeah, fan claims he was beaten and bruised by police during a confrontation. Lauren Squires has both sides of the story. She joins us live with the latest this morning. Good morning, Lauren. Good morning. This is certainly a talker, something a lot of folks have been watching on Facebook, but there are certainly two sides of this story and they don't necessarily match up. But take a look at the video posted on Facebook by the victim slash suspect's wife yesterday. It shows a scuffle between a fan who we now know is Chris Barnes and police. It appears he's punched by police twice. This all happened at the Ole Miss LSU football game on Saturday night. Now the wife that posted this said the incident is an assault by police and she says that her husband had a concussion and fractured bones in his face. The, the video does appear to show an officer hitting the man. Witnesses, though, commented later and said the man was drunk and belligerent and that police were called to the stands after he, ha he was yelling inappropriate things around children in the nearby area. Now, Ole Miss police, campus police, say those officers involved were not directly employed with the university, but they are officers for other jurisdictions. They tell us they are investigating this incident and right now it's unclear what charges Barnes will face. Obviously, we'll likely learn much more this morning. For now, reporting live, I'm Lauren Squires. 
All right, Lauren, thanks. Back here in Jackson, it's awfully cold this morning. And you learned a little lesson this morning about not That's warming it. up the car. <laughs> yes, I ran out there I, thinking, you know, well, it's 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 just cold and it was cold and icy and I had to, I drove a little bit and realized yeah. I can't see. I had to stop and get out and use the credit card to scrape the ice off. <laughs> Don't follow his lead. Yeah. Give yourself that extra time to warm up the car and you'll have it much easier, I promise. Mm. Look at these temperatures that we have going on right now. 20s in a lot of spots like Jackson 29, Natchez 28, Vicksburg and Macomb are in the low 30s right now. But your high temps today are going to be above freezing. So once that sun comes out, things will start warming up. We'll be in the mid and upper 50s today. Could even get as warm as 60 in Macomb, 59 Hazelhurst and 59 today in McGee. It's certainly on the warm uh, on the cool side, but we will be warming things back up as we get towards the end of the work week, and I'll have more details on that in a few minutes. Traffic and weather together now at 620. It's a uh, live look now at I-55 at Pearl Street in Jackson. You can see everything's moving along with no trouble so far this morning as the sun comes up on the horizon. Let's look at first alert traffic next on three. President Obama has landed. I'm Tracy Patti is back from Asia early this morning facing quite a growing controversy about how to deal with ISIS. We'll have the latest on that next. Welcome on back at 624. Let's talk about this weather. What you have to know for this morning is that it is incredibly cold. We're dealing with our first freeze of the fall. Other than that, though, we've actually got a couple of really nice days ahead of us. We're going to see those temperatures getting a little bit warmer each day. Today in the 50s, tomorrow going to be in the low 60s, and Wednesday should be around the mid and upper 60s, making for easy travel around the south. Turkey Day, mostly cloudy and mild. Temps going to be in the upper 60s and low 70s. Let's look at that hour by hour forecast starting on Wednesday. Your big travel day, nice and quiet all around the south, so no major problems. Clouds do fill back in though on Thanksgiving itself. I'm expecting it's going to be a pretty uh, cloudy kind of a day, but no showers in store. On Black Friday, rain a little more likely farther off to the north. In central Mississippi, showers become more likely on Saturday and on Sunday, and I'll have more in this forecast coming up, so stay tuned. Donald Trump's controversial idea to monitor Muslims in the U.S. is shaking things up in Washington and on the campaign trail. Tracy Potts is joining us this morning from Washington with the latest. Good morning, Tracy. Wilson and Joy, good morning. Good in Washington for three on your side. I'm Tracy Potts. With the help of his children, one man is paying tribute to his late wife in a unique way. Take a look. I'm going to hand this to you. Okay. Officer. Jolly. Jolly. <laughs> That's a great name. <laughs> He and his two children passed out love notes across uptown as a way to pay it forward. Inside the note, a link to 100lovenotes.com, which tells the story of a family that made the most of their time together. Well, I wouldn't give to have one more minute, just even a minute, to talk, to hold hands. And I want people to take a minute to reflect on that and you know, share a note with somebody they love. He plans to honor his wife again next year. We'll be right back.